Hello everyone, this is Samir from Audio Science Review. I thought I was done with the PS Audio <laughs> power plant analysis. I think I did 23 tests, uh, two videos and thousands of uh, forum posts. But uh, that was not meant to be. Um, a couple of days ago or yesterday, PS Audio released a video and uh, with their measurements uh, of, of the unit. And a lot of people have asked me for my feedback and I try to explain text, but it's a lot better to do it in, in a video where I can speak freely. And then also post my video releases, um, we had a bunch of really good technical discussions and, and figured out more about the uh, uh, technical uh, uh, operation of the device beyond what the company has advertised and, and shown. So I thought uh, I'd go through both of those uh, with you today because they actually go hand in hand. And I'm doing it in a PowerPoint, I apologize for that. I couldn't figure out an easier way to do it. So let me summarize first what we tested and the, the outcomes that we had. Um, uh, on the positive front, the PS Audio P12 does generate cleaner uh, mains uh, AC signal. It has lower distortion, has a little bit more noise, but let's forgive that. It has lower distortion significantly so. Um, but as an AC generator, regenerator, it's not a great device. Um, my lab uh, being K9801, which is less than half the price, although at lower power, generates far, far cleaner power. So, you know, if one decides that you need a power regenerator, uh, you know, in a competitive situation, it does, it does not do well at all. Um, it does do regulation, which means if your voltage sags below 120 volts in U.S., I measured all the way down to 90, 95 volts, it will step it up to 120. And if you go above 120, it will pull, pull it back down. So it does provide uh, regulation in both uh, directions. Um, both of these are given, they're not disputed, and as you'll see later on, bulk of what PS Audio tries to do in their video is to prove these points again, which didn't make sense. Uh, the key was that despite the cleanup that he did on, on AC mains, uh, I couldn't uh, measure any improvement, electrical improvement on the output of either switching power supply or a linear power supply, the most common kinds of, of uh, um, power supplies you have in your audio devices. And there's you know, real engineering reasoning behind that. And that is because the power supplies have, uh, um, they convert things to DC by, uh, uh, filtering the AC and uh, and they also have uh, regulators and those regulators guarantee a voltage that's needed inside the device 3.3 volts 5 volt 12 volts whatever the case may be and uh, the regulations are already there and that's why we don't need the upstream regulation in AC it's assumed that the AC varies and because of that we have regulation inside the device um, which means by definition every engineer that designs audio equipment uh, knows that AC varies, and that's part of the design criteria um, on this. And uh, it's also assumed that the AC is not clean, uh, so there's filtering in there to produce the performance that the device requires. So that was uh, sort of a, we've, we've sort of characterized AC and said, yes, it does something on the AC. But then we characterized the power supply, which is the next stage after the AC input, <clears throat> and showed that it does not care and nothing changes in its output. And naturally, when we then tested what's uh, downstream of a power supply, which is uh, your audio equipment, it also showed no improvement at all. And uh, uh, there were two types of devices that I tested. One was a headphone amplifier, one was a power amp with a switching power supply. Uh, and I'll get in a second to uh, one without the switching power supply. Both of those showed identical performance with or without uh, PS Audio uh, P12. So we've gone through a chain of three stages in the pipeline and characterize the device. In the first stage, AC, there was improvement, but we don't listen to AC, we don't use AC, we step it down to DC, and then I showed that it, it makes no difference. Now, there was a, 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 an inverted uh, issue in that we actually found a problem with using the P12 in that when I tested the linear amplifier, uh, on its high current output, which we call HC output, uh, the outlets in the back, uh, performance actually went down rather than going up. Less wattage was produced by this amplifier, which is exact opposite. Uh, company specifies uh, a, uh, uh, a 
uh, output impedance of 0 0.008, which is essentially zero, but my uh, impedance measurement meter showed more than three ohms. It, it can't measure more than three ohms. So it could have been a lot more than three ohms. And um, that would explain why we were uh, getting less wattage because there was a voltage drop across that outlet and we were getting less power, not more. So this is a case where the, the power plant P12 was actually doing damage to our system in degrading its performance objectively. No doubt about it, you got less power. I think about 7.5% less power. And why would you spend $6,000 on a device that gives you less power? So um, fortunately, you can use the non-high current outputs, uh, outlets, and that didn't uh, degrade the performance. You know, it produced a little bit less wattage, but we can forgive that. Uh, but it also didn't improve whatsoever. Not a single extra watt was produced, um, distortion and noise, nothing was changed. So the notion that you need to clean up the AC was proven again in this third device um, that it also didn't care and didn't need a power plant. Um, company's response in forums and just wishy-washy stuff from Paul McGowan uh, was that, oh, there is a current limit in the high current output, but uh, we bypass it after a few seconds or something to that effect. Well, that didn't happen. There was no bypassing. My testing takes a long time. And frankly, you can't do that. It just makes no sense that there'd be a bypassing in there. And need the, indeed, there isn't. So that was the summary of, you know, two or three weeks of my testing extensively reviewed and argued by many people internally to Audio Sound Review and externally. This is solid as, as it can be. And uh, so let's see what uh, PS Audio did. I didn't want to play their content. You're welcome to go and, and uh, play their response. Um, let me explain what they measured. Uh, on this. So they first measured the power coming out of this long power strip he's, uh, the designer has on his bench. And as you can imagine, that probably is not the best you know, way to distribute power to an audio system. So they first measured that and they got 122 volts output um, on this. And then he's built a dummy load, basically big resistors cooled with a fan. And when he flips these switches, it puts a heavy load on, on the mains. I think it was 700 watts or 900 watts, I forget which. And when he did that, the voltage dropped minuscule amount, 122 down to 118. No audio device cares whatsoever that your AC main drop from 122 to 118, two or three volts input, nothing. The internal voltage in an in a audio device is you know, 10, 20 volts, 30 volts. It's, it's not you know, 122 volts. And that step down uh, to those low voltages and then regulations provided. So it's it just right away, it's a bad idea to show this. Now, if that voltage had gone from 122 to 85, we say, okay, oh, wow, there was a voltage drop. And this is despite putting basically a hairdryer load on this thing, constant load on it, not a momentary load as you play music, where those impulses come and they can be served by the capacitor reservoir in, the, in your audio device. They'll put a constant resistor load in here, just cooking in their, you know, basically 700 watt heater or 900 watt heater. And all they could show was two or three volts. Then they said, well, looky, uh, when I uh, go through uh, the uh, P12, it's back up to 120 volts. Well, yeah, I already measured that it regulates from 90 to 135 volts, I think was the range I measured. It regulates, but again, we don't need regulation of AC because 99.9% .9 of the world uh, of audio files has audio equipment that runs perfectly on unregulated AC. You know, regulated AC is not a requirement. No manual for any audio device ever come out and says, hey, for the best performance, you better feed it regulated AC. <laughs> you know, they all have unregulated. But anyway, so it regulated. But so what? That's not the point of how we were making and already, you know, said it regulates. Then they try to measure the impedance of the wall outlet. It's not really wall outlet, it's this power strip over here. And really um, DIY type of measurement setup. I expected them to have a line analyzer and a professional equipment that measures current and voltage. And instead we have a portable uh, DMM for voltage measurement, which is fine. But for current measurement, he uses a current probe. A current probe is a non-invasive um, probe, a transformer, or usually a single or more than one loop that you put around a wire and using his magnetic induction, you can deduce how much current is going in there. This is only used sort of 
more or less for technician work or quick analysis. I can walk up to a, a meter in your home and just put the probe on, on one of the cables and say, whoa, it's pulling this much current. Or in your car, I can go and put that in there. That requires a DC uh, current measurement, which is a different animal. But anyway, this is called non-invasive and you get convenience in that. Uh, you don't have to touch, uh, break the wire, but you also don't get very high accuracy with these things. Indeed, if you move and wiggle these probes, uh, the amount of current that they show changes because the induction is, is not perfect. Um, the right way to do that is you cut the wire and you put an ammeter in between them and you measure. Now, he's made his own dummy load. I would have then put a, you know, uh, pass through uh, uh, amp meter through this and, and measure AC amps and not try to use this, this Dewey key over here. Now, I, I have many current probes as well. Don't get me wrong. They're very useful where you could just walk up and measure current. Uh, but it's just, if you're going to try to show what he's going to do in a second, which is do a div division of voltage to current and get the impedance, you know, you want to have that current be accurate when you try to compute numbers this small, 0 0.054. Anyway, this also I uh, showed in my measurements. I showed that my AC mains, uh, I think it was like 0.3 or something. And when I used P12's uh, high, uh, low current uh, outlets, it did go down some. It didn't go down this much. But it did goes down some, um, and uh, it was given. But here's the kicker: this specification for for P12 says that the uh, impedance with no qualification is zero point zero zero eight. Right in front of us, they're measuring and getting zero point zero five four. Well, that's one decimal place off of this thing. It's about eight times worse than the, uh, what the spec is. And then when that happens, you know, Paul sort of catches that. And he says, oh, yeah, when we measure it, we, we don't use all of this stuff. We go right inside the thing and measure it. Oh, really? How do I tap into, connect my amplifier right inside this box? I have to go through outlets. I have to go through power cords. And therefore, that defeats the purpose of having such a small impedance. So as a practical matter, you would never, ever see this impedance uh, facing your device, as you see more like what he's showing, which is off by one decimal place uh, on this thing. So that, you know, that alone just shows, and by the way, I speculated that's what they're doing, because you just, I know I have measured connections, and, you know, I know these outlets alone have more impedance than this. So what they said was just silliness. There should have been at least an asterisk saying it measured internally or computed. I don't even know they measured it internally. Uh, clearly, it's not what you as a consumer are going to get. It's like saying zero to 60 is three seconds for your car, but little asterisk says we took all the seats out. You know, it, it's just not, you gotta say that you took out all the seats in the car. So anyway, but again, at a high level, it's fine. You know, we, we said it does that. It has slightly lower Im impedance um, than what I measured, and that was not a dispute. What the issue was, was this high current outlet where the impedance was very high. And if you look in here, which outlet he's using, these are all low current outlets over here. Only the last one next to this AC input is high current. So he's not using the high current outlet despite Paul knowing full well, their CEO that's in this video, that tons of debate was around what the high current outlet did because that's what you hook up to an amplifier. This impedance does not matter one iota if you got a little DAC in there that's pulling 100 watts or 50 watts. The impedance, there's, no, there's so little current being pulled that the impedance losses, it's just minuscule, even if the... There was no power supply in your DAC. So to go and do all this video production, when he perfectly knows the point of the debate was this high current outlets right here, these two over here, they go measure the low current outlets where there was no debate. I said, if you use the low current uh, uh, outlets, you do get low impedance, didn't generate more power and uh, on this thing. But hey, you know, th th that wasn't the dispute. The dispute is the manual says nothing about avoiding high current outlets. They are regenerated, and, but they have high impedance. They have some kind of current limiter with NTC or something else in there. And that current limiter is just destroying any story they have around impedance because it actually produces higher impedance here than this power strip does in, in his lap. So, uh, it just boggles my mind that they 
try to answer what we're doing or try to show the capability of the device. And they don't show you why, you know, the one port that's different than the rest, they don't tell you what it is. Anyway, let's move on. After they do that, they say, whoa, so that's, you know, we do the regulation, but um, what we also do is that we clean up the waveform, okay? Again, that wasn't in dispute, um, you know, but I thought they would put in proper analyzers around this thing and show the measurements. No, they go look at the front panel display and there's this little low resolution display. Say, so look, look how much, how clean this waveform is that's coming out of the device. Well, there's not enough pixels in here to see what it is in here that is wrong, number one. <laughs> And so what you want to do is, and I'll show you in a second, you do a Fourier transform and that shows you all the distortion and noise spikes. You can't see noise in here in this little display. And I showed that the meter in this thing is three times inaccurate uh, in some cases. So, you know, even this distortion meter is no good. Why doesn't the designer have a, you know, a line analyzer sitting up here as a minimum? that shows you proper THD uh, on that, or better yet, use audio precision setup I have, which gives an extremely high performance analysis of, of the main signal. They don't have either one. They're relying on a dummy meter, low, you know, low cost uh, freebie meter they got in here. It's not freebie, but cost of money, but you know what I'm talking about. This is a consumer device, not an instrument. Um, after I showed that it's inaccurate, they go ahead and, and keep saying, looky, looky over here, is cleaner. Yes, it is cleaner. That's not a problem. The problem is that the downstream devices don't care. And this is not the way to prove that it is cleaner uh, on this thing. So anyway, um, let's go further. Um, they have this multi-wave thing and I turned it on and off and I didn't notice any difference. They say that the, what multi-wave does, it actually takes the waveform and fattens it. In other words, it flattens the top. Much earlier than this, we kept saying that you want to have the original peak restored because it gets flattened because it gets pounded on. But now they added the third harmonic, which fattens this up. You could say it generates more energy in there, but my AC waveform where I analyze it already had the third harmonic in it. So they first removed the third harmonic by 20 dB or whatever. Then they add it back in again. It's like, wait a second. Is distortion bad for AC or is it good for the AC? Make up your mind. You can't say that I've got to remove distortion from AC to make it good. Then you turn around and says, oh, I've got this bonus feature. You turn it on and it adds distortion to it and distorts that pretty sine wave to be a you know, fattened sine wave. It makes no sense at all. But yes, it is true that those harmonics carry a little bit of power and... Uh, when you take them out with the P12 or any of their power plants, you're actually reducing available energy to the power supply inside your audio equipment. So, before we get into all the measurements, there's an introduction to this video where Paul says what he's been saying for a while, which is a, 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 this statement is quite nebulous. I've got the closed caption turned on, but that's what he's saying. He says, creates a perfect low distortion AC signal. A perfect low distortion. Perfect means no distortion. If it's low distortion, then it's low distortion is not perfect. Perfect means nothing wrong with it, or at least infinitesimally small aberrations in there. If you go to their website, they say that, that too. It says it takes incoming AC power and regenerates a new sine wave that's perfect. Okay? And that it doesn't have any of the problems such as distorted waveforms, okay? So stay with me. It says it eliminates noise, it eliminates distorted waveforms, and it generates a perfect wave. And here's a perfect in here. How perfect is it? Well, let's go back to my measurements again. And this is where discovery came from discussions in the forum. This is my AC mains spectrum. This is the 60 hertz, which carries all the power. And then, yes, we have harmonics. This is second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth, fifth, and, and it keeps going on. And this is a very wide band measurement going up to a megahertz. So lots of stuff going on in there. And then let's look at what uh, output of the PS Audio P, uh, P12 looks like. It also has the 60 hertz, but interestingly enough, step back and look at the shape of this waveform and look at the shape of this waveform. 
they look identical, don't they? Yes, the spikes have been lowered in amplitude, and I'll get to that in a second, but why on earth is this waveform so identically close to my raw AC? If you take AC and convert it to DC, then all of this is gone. Everything is gone, right? It's DC, it doesn't have the AC. 60 hertz doesn't have any of these things, right? When you convert it to DC, and then you have a power amplifier that's fed with 60 hertz, you then generate a new AC out of it, it would have distortion, it would have noise, but it can't have the noise and distortion. It looks just like the input that you fed it. How could this be, right? It doesn't make sense that the spectrum of a perfect sine wave generated from conversion of AC to DC looks just like the AC again with a little bit less distortion, but every oddity is in here. Even this spike over here, this stepping down is in here. Doesn't make sense, right? These two are highly correlated uh, waveforms. Now let's look at how it works when I have a proper lab AC regenerator, which is my BNK 9801, BK Precision 9801. It's a lab generator that I own, costs $2,500 and 300 watts. And when, I, when it does that, it truly generates a different spectrum. Look at what it does. Look at the noise floor in here. It looks nothing like my noise floor. Look at how much lower the noise floor is, way down here versus this. Look at the distortion spikes. The second harmonic is much higher than mine, so it's actually worse in that regard. But then all the other harmonics are uh, actually a lot better uh, than that, so that's why it's a much cleaner device. And it has its own noise and distortion, like I said. It's got all these other spikes that mine didn't have. But overall, it's, it is much cleaner. Notice that there's no correlation. If you step back, this waveform looks nothing like this. And this is the way a regenerator works. Again, you're converting AC to DC, you get rid of all the noise and distortion, and you start over again with a clean 60 hertz. This is what you get. Instead, we have this. What, what is going on in here? Well, let's uh, look at some uh, uh, comparisons, lay comparisons. I have this PS Audio P300, which I think I bought 25 years ago, 30 years ago. And it's only rated at 300 watts, okay? And it weighs 30 pounds. And it's a box extremely deep. It's 19 inches deep. So this is, and it's all a heat sink. I mean, it's a massive, massive, massive box. And it heats up that entire heat sink is just sitting there. It just, it's just a heat generator. It's very, very, very inefficient. Okay, only 300 watts, and it's 30 pounds, say 19 inches deep. Now look at the P12, it's rated at 1,250 watts, so about four times, more than four times the power rating of this box. How much heavier is it? Just seven pounds, 37 pounds versus 30. Doesn't make sense, right? This very 300, did convert AC to DC and back to AC. And because it's dealing with such high voltages, all the output stage runs so inefficiently that it just spit out a ton of heat that had to be cooled with these massive heat sinks. So clearly there's some trickery going on in here to get incredibly high efficiency you know, out of the same conversion. You know, is there some miracle in there? Well, one technique, where we go get efficiencies by using switching design, although I don't know, it's non-trivial to apply it to this domain. But the most likely explanation that actually members were very good at digging into older manuals and reading between lines is that this line of power plants from PS Audio is actually a partial regenerator. In other words, you take some of the AC, pass it through the dirty water, and mix it with some bottled water. And what you get is a mixture of bottled water and filtered water and the dirty water. You don't get all filtered, all clean, new water. If you mix the two, that explains why we see similar uh, spectrum, because all the noise and the distortion, as far as signature of the noise and distortion in the AC mains comes through. Yes, there's less of those distortions because you don't take the full AC, you take a, a subset of the, of the AC signal, and then you pile on more accurate um, AC waveform on top of that. So the end result is that you don't get a very clean AC, but because the uh, power regenerator doesn't have to fully reproduce the entire waveform on its own and deliver all the power on its own, it winds up being a lot more efficient because doing partial regeneration is having to only produce that power and incurs those losses, not the full losses. 
Now, I challenged the company to come and explain to me wh why uh, this is not the case. Because there's boarding in there, for example, where it's trying to lock his internal sine wave generator to the incoming AC. Why would you need to lock the two waveforms together? If you're just generating fresh AC, you don't need to lock it to the incoming AC. But you do if you're trying to pile one on top of the other and you want to line them up. Now, admittedly, this is reading between the line, but like I said, this evidence here is quite damning in here as far as, you know, companies saying you get perfect. First of all, this is not perfect. I don't know by whose definition is perfect. If this is perfect, then this is perfect, too, <laughs> how I see it, because it has the same signature. It has the same distortions, it has the same noise and everything. And as I've explained in the video, it actually has additional noise in here, which kind of makes sense. You take the AC mains and you put an amplifier on top that also has noise, and the two of them, you know, climb up in noise. So, not good. Uh, you know, if the company wants to do another video, have the designer explain to us how this works, I'd love to know. And sadly, they don't show you any kind of measurements like this. This is the power of doing precise measurements and knowing what you're doing and having the right instrumentation. Uh, voltmeter and ammeter isn't going to give you this. And looking at the front panel of that display isn't going to tell you this. What they call perfect and clean, and look at how pretty that sine wave is. That sine wave has all the gunk is still in it. So it didn't give you a perfect sine wave. Perfect sine wave would be this spike here and nothing else. All right, moving along. There is a, uh, let me sort of step back and show you proof point of why we don't need any of this stuff. AC input, again, is considered variable. We step it down and then we post regulate it. You don't believe me? Here's Ted Smith, designer of PS Audio's direct stream DAC and tells you this. So I have multiple quality discrete regulators in series with a custom bootstrap voltage reference for each, for each of these different uh, sub circuits, excuse me. He already has not only one regulator, has multiple cascaded regulators is built. And this is quite common in high performance devices. They may have like a switching power supply that spits out 12 volts, or they may get a 12 volt thing. And then they step that down to, you know, five volt or what have you. And then they step it down again to 3.3 volts. Oftentimes this is like multiple filtering, multiple re-regulation to get rid of even the slightest amount of ripple. And also what he says also to keep it from having one circuit's dem volt uh, power demands bleed into another circuit's power demands. So this kind of thing is common. Go read the specs from any high performance DAC or preamp and you'll see them in marketing material, they gush over, oh, they have multiple regulators and they have four regulators or six regulators. This is what a designer will do internally because they want the device to perform exceptionally well when hooked up to any AC mains. Which designer sitting there designing a preamp saying, hmm, uh, you know, I'm gonna have it work when you have this device plugged into it, but if you don't, all bets are off. No, you know, you assume mains is always dirty. You assume mains is always variable. Thankfully, we don't need 120 volts inside. We need 12 volts, 10 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts. So we need so much less voltage that we have so much headroom that we can just regulate that and get superb performance. Uh, sometimes you just have to shake your head. So after Paul posts this, uh, Paul McGowan, the CEO of the company, uh, and co-founder of the company, po posts this uh, on their forum, the video, somebody comes out and correctly points out to him, said, where's the high current output uh, measurements and why are you not addressing all the things that your science review pointed out? You basically are testing is orthogonal, you know, we, you know, I, I raised issues and you didn't. Well, the first part of it is that it says, Mrs. My tests were silly and they missed the point of the power plant. Really? The point of a power plant is to make your audio system run better, right? It, I don't consume AC, I don't stick the AC on my tongue and, or listen to it. You hook up a power plant to an audio system. There's nothing in their testing where they took one of their amps or DACs and hooked it up to it and say, look, the output got better. So that's not, I'm, they're missing the point of the power plant. I'm not. And then it begrudgingly said the tests weren't incorrect. Well, thank you very much. They were just misleading in a negative way that doesn't help the community. Really? Which, which community am I supposed to be helping? Manufacturers that build devices that don't do what they say? 
And then he's um, a bit of a, I won't say what he's saying over here. And he says he doesn't like products that aren't carried in his store in Bellevue, Madrona Digital. God. Madrona Digital, as I explained in my last video, is a custom integration company. We have high-end clients are building a home. They come in and say, look, anything that touches basically uh, security, lighting, shades, um, distributed audio in a home. And yes, they may have an AVR in a bedroom that you know plays stereo, multi-channel music. Occasionally do a theater. We're not a retail company. And I praise incredible number of products have nothing to do with my business whatsoever. When I praise a topping DAC, I don't carry the topping DAC. Uh, when I praise a Molo Molo DAC, a Genelec speaker, a Neumann speaker, um, you know, it, it just, it, it makes no sense. I, I praise Denon receivers. I don't think we carry or sell any of these things. By the way, ironically, a few years ago, the rep for um, uh, PS Audio, when they, before they cut the legs from uh, under all their reps and dealers uh, and went direct, uh, they came over and I remember going to Madrona and seeing one of these uh, power plants there with a pretty display. And I remember that display looked very cool. And then I asked how much it costs and I was like, oh no, we, we can't carry it. And they came back and picked it up uh, on this thing. So it has nothing to do with this kind of innuendo. Do your homework. If you want to go after me personally, Paul, do some homework, understand who we are and what we are. Pick up the phone call, Madrona Digital, and say, hey, do you sell top index? You know, do you sell general X speakers? Do some, actually, we do install some general X speakers in some high-end installs. But, you know, it makes no sense. You know, yes, Harman's speakers perform well. I don't just say I like them. I show you the measurements that show incredible performance based on the that's research we know about how to make a, a good speaker. And I'm hoping they're following Harman research in producing their speakers. And uh, if you don't agree with me, what do you, you know, agree with what? I mean, this product with P12 was sent to me. I measured it. Measurements say it does nothing useful for anybody. And by the way, it degrades performance based on undocumented issues with his high current port. I, you know, what do you want me to do? I can't fake the measurements. I didn't go in there and, and produce bad measurements because I could. Uh, he's confused me with people who write subjective reviews. And uh, if you don't butter their bread the, the right way, they can say negative things about you. And who's to say otherwise? Oh, I listened to this amplifier, it sounds cold. Yep, you're screwed. And a bunch of people are not gonna buy that amp because it sounds cool. I don't have that luxury. I go by measurements and the instrument doesn't care what Madrona carries and what Madrona doesn't. And, uh, you know, you can go ahead and produce the same measurements and show different results. The fact that you haven't done one measurement like I perform shows that, you know, you either don't understand or don't care about the truth and you just want to uh, pass on some nonsense. And then he really disappoints me with this next one. He says, my hope is that he becomes a productive member of the community rather than a thorn in his side. Which community? The uh, manufacturers that build stuff that can't be shown to do anything good for a consumer, yet cost nearly $6,000? Uh, I'm not ever going to be part of that community. I am providing a service for customers of PS Audio. Their customer had a P12, sent it to me for testing. Their customer had their DAC, sent it to me for testing. Their customer had their amps, sent it to me for testing. I've tested probably seven or eight products from them. One of them I like, the rest of them measurements show really, you know, either okay or poor performance with really bad ideas. Audiophile mists that they've chased and put in products without a single control testing, without proper measurements to understand what they do, what they don't do. So, Paul, your wish will never come through. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have had my long, uh, successful career, and now I'm spending my uh, hobby time measuring stuff from the community and speaking to what they do. I have no fear of you saying I won't be part of your uh, club, um, you know, Go ahead and challenge me on, on merit. Don't make up, you know, rumors and stuff about what I like and don't like on this thing. And uh, he says, you know, he wants to straighten out the facts. And products are misrepresented. In what way did I misrepresent your product, Paul? I measured what it did to a power supply. I measured what it did to an amplifier. You haven't shown one measurement that disputes any of that whatsoever. 
there's not one thing you had an opportunity you put a camera in front of a designer you could have tried to replicate my test and show different results so why didn't you do that well because you know you can't produce different results or you don't understand the measurements still which by the way is part of my suspicion or that you're not capable of setting up those measurements you don't have the right instrumentation when i look at the bench from your designer for sure that I don't see any audio precision in there. I don't see a spectrum analyzer. I don't see a THD meter for mains. All I see is two voltmeters to $200, 400 devices. And you're trying to say, you know, you're measuring things. You're not measuring things. Those are just toy measurements that were not in dispute. So I want to say, you know, as much as I look passionate right now, I do approach every product without passion or prejudice. You know, I just put the product on the bench and I'm like, you know, you clean up AC, maybe it cleans up. I mean, I had no, you know, thought that it would reduce power in an amplifier. I, I was shocked when I hooked up the high current thing. I'm like, whoa, there's 8% less power. You know, what's going on in here? And we spent our own resources trying to figure out how the device worked after Paul said, oh, he was mistaken about how the device worked. So from that point of view, the thing I can promise him and everybody in the industry is that you will get your product fairly evaluated 100%. I cannot cook the measurements. I can't game them. Can a mistake happen? Sure. You go ahead and show me the mistake. Um, there was a note he put in there that I didn't use the latest firmware. I did use the latest firmware at the time that the product was in my hand. On March 18th, they released another version of the firmware. No release notes, no statement about what is fixed. And that's after I did my measurement. Why would he say something like this, that I didn't get the latest firmware? I mean, it just makes no sense. Uh, that's a classic thing of, you know, creating FUD around these things. So I hope the person that really steps up is Paul McGeon and the company is PS Audio. They're have a ton of capabilities to build great products. They have the wherewithal, they have manufacturing, they have employees, they have engineers. Uh, this P12 is not a simple device to design. There's a lot of complexity in a designing a high voltage amplifier like that. It's just that, you know, he's pointed the, sh the ship in the wrong direction. He says, build five versions of this power plant because when I hook it up, I think my ears tells me that everything sounds great. And I got these five reviewers saying the same thing and six owners say the same thing. Gosh, for a second, do a blind test. Set up your demo room with the box in there, but not always hooked up. You walk in a dozen times and, you know, show whether you tell whether you think the, the thing is in, in the system or it isn't. And see if you get a 10 out of 12 times right. Hey, how much work is that? If you had done that, you just put a camera in there and show it to us. A lot of us would shut up. Well, as a minimum, we go buy one of your power plants and try to replicate what you did. But, you know, when you didn't do that, you didn't measure the device, you know, the onus is on you to do the right thing. And that's the opportunity for him. My opportunity is at hand. I'm fortunate not to have the knowledge and equipment that I have. I'm going to keep measuring your, your devices as they're, as they're sent to me. No more sent to me, you won't see me around. But his customers are interested in how they perform. And, uh, you know, that's where we are. Anyway. This video is getting very long. I'll stop it here. Hopefully you aren't as fed up with it as, as I am with the topic and, and want to move on to something else. Okay? See you in a future video. Bye-bye.